Hey guys, so welcome to my video on painting lips and mouth. I'm using the pudding kit today. Um, I thought I was using Quinton, but I was ahead of myself. I'm using pudding. So um, I was. this kit was donated to me um, by a lovely one of you subscribers. Hello, how are you? Um, and I'm going to do my whole work on this one sorry if i'm a little bit hot i'm sort of a little bit hot in my room at the moment and i just want to get going with this so i can show you all what to do so anyway um let's first we're going to wash the kit so let's go and do that okay guys so what i've got here is my kit of course as i'm just doing the mouth and um tongue on this little guy I'm only just going to do the washing of just his head um, so nothing else so you can see I've got like a little toothbrush there and a washcloth um, I've got my sink obviously here I'm just going to put the plug in and start filling it up with just warm water and some morning fresh I have here I'm just going to put a little squirt in so it bubbles up a bit Ooh. okay so let me get my setup now I don't want to drop my camera in the sink I'm doing this all by hand for a moment Okay, so now what I do is I grab my kit. Okay, so just literally grab the head, um, get your toothbrush, mix it in the water, put dip the head in the water, sort of roll it around a bit. Try not to get too much water in here. The most part, we want to keep that dry if we can help it. And so you just get your toothbrush, actually get your little cloth first and wipe over the entire kit. This is just getting off any oily residue. And to get into those fine parts, you just, just like you're brushing your teeth, just give it a scrub. In any way you see creases or lines that you may have not properly gotten into with the cloth. In those eyes there. around the edge of the nose and in the nostrils around the mouth and obviously in the mouth so if you want you can always push the mouth out sometimes by squeezing the kit you get more of a looky see inside the mouth just try to get around there as much as you can And since I've touched the outside of the kit again I'm going to wipe over it just in case my fingers got any residue on there I did wash my hands before I did this so then we just have a, a towel I've got a little old cloth nappy here I'm just gonna leave it to dry for a little bit um, I'll let most of the water um, just sort of come off it and then I'll get my handheld hair dryer and do the last part so just wait for that to happen and then we'll skip to the next part okay guys you can get me in a little bit so what I'm going to do now is the the kit has dried off quite a lot um, I've got my handheld well, of course they're all handheld hair dryer here and what I'm going to do is dry the excessive water that is still hanging around um, if you've got a heating tool, it's the same, or heating gun, it's the same sort of concept. Um, any hair dryer will do as well. This is just the hair dryer I've got in my toolbox, and um, I'm going to dry it now.
Okay, so we washed the kit and then we dried the kit and here we are again. <coughs> Sorry, <coughs> coughing voice. So first what I want to start to do is I'm going to work with a red colour um, and I'm going to do just some of the features of the lips and the tongue first. So what I'm using is I'm just going to use the Genesis Red to start with. I'm just going to get like a little edge scoop out of it, nothing major. Just something like that. Um, I'll probably use most of this red throughout the process. Now, um, as you know, I'm just working on the lips and the tongue. I'm not actually going to paint this whole kit. I'm going to do that at a later date. It just, if I was to work on the whole kit and be showing you that process, it would have taken a heck of a lot longer. So I've just get my red brush, get that out of the way, and I'm just going to use about a half, a, probably about half a teaspoon of odorless solvent. I, I'm just going to use a little bit here. Um, you can use, get your little measuring thing, but I would use about a half a teaspoon of odorless solvent, just like the regular way we mix. Um, now, I don't know how well you guys can see that here. I'm not doing a double camera today, but you can basically see it's red so just mix up a red color I'm using the Genesis red for this so as you can see it's all nicely mixed in now I guess since I am working on intricate detail I am gonna have to get my other camera organized so I'll just get that okay so you guys can see what I'm doing here so I'm just going to get like a very a fairly fine um, paintbrush. Let's move everything back a little bit so you guys can see. A fairly fine paintbrush, but it's not super fine. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dip it in the red. As you can see, there is my red. Pounce off or brush off any excess. And first, I'm just going to go through all the like little creases now this is not um, doesn't have to be perfection so if um, like I'm not trying to like exactly do the creases here I'm just trying to sort of show that that's a feature hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing just try to get into the creases as best as you can and then I'm going to go down into the deep grooves now this kit my hands have been washed it's going to need a lot of <clears throat> moving on my part so squishing like really squishing out of place so you can get into those little fine spots so I'm just going to get down into that groove and then on the bottom lip again there's some creases now you don't have to paint them all. You can see my brush is looking a little bit like it would like a new one, <laughs> but it still works for me. So, and this is just a tutorial, so you'll have an extra good brush. And just get under the tongue there. Any excess bits you do, you can just get a cosmetic wedge and either pounce off on your sharp end or another brush that's clean. Okay, so you can see I've just done the features. I've done the creases on the top of the lip there. I've done the creases on the bottom. Now, like remember, I'm not exactly going perfectly in the line of the crease. It doesn't, like I don't find like with this kit that I need to do that. Um, I've done the line of the gum, top and bottom, and I've just done the line underneath the tongue. So now I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to heat set it. I want to heat set it because if I was to use another color over the top, um, before I've heat set it it may just 
wipe away what I've already done. So go and heat set that now. Okay, so before you heat set it, um, I just wanted to show you, um, as in if I was to do a line, like let's just see, I say I did a line there. Now when that dries, it will dry pretty much like that, very liney. Um, we have to remember we don't want to have the customer looking at it very liney. So I'm just going to get a little bit more light. Whoops. Just going to get a little bit more light on this subject for you, hopefully. Okay, so what you do to not have that happen is you need to have a brush or something similar like this and pounce out it, which is kind of like blending it out. So I'm just going to pounce on there and what you'll see is the lines on the edges of that crease they tend to start to blend in sorry my camera has a tendency to want to move forward at the moment so you'll need to just pounce out all of your creases and then even inside the mouth we don't want to as you can see the top line there um, how it's looking quite full on um, what we need to do is pounce that it'll just simply blend it so just get like a small brush something like this this is just a, like a cosmetic brush um, and just pounce simply pounce over and over and over um, until that fully blends now of course you wouldn't have left that dry and then try to pounce you need to pounce it shortly after you have painted it and then you will heat set it Okay, so before I go to heat set mine, I just wanted to show you, you can see the lines on the bottom there and you can see that they're well blended in. Um, you can also see the gum too. There's no real um, harsh red there and under the tongue there, it's not like a harsh red. It looks blended. Now, don't forget, there's going to be other colours over the top of that. So um, if you feel, if you've heat set it and you can find, see a bit that's not blended, it might um, be able to be rectified with the other um, colours. Another thing you should have um, on our little tool table here is one of those cotton tips with the sharp tip. I'll bring it in and I'll show you um, after I've heat set it so you can see what I mean. Okay so we just well he's been out of the oven now and is has cooled. Um, this was the um, pointed end cotton tip that I was talking about before these can be purchased on my website um, they're singularly wrapped you can buy them singly or in I think packs of 10 or 50 um, a lot of people can get them these type of things in their own area but some people aren't able to so that's why I've just got them available on my website so I'll just open it up and as you can see, it's nice and easy. If I want to get into little spots in there, I can pick up excess fluid and the other end is just rounded. Always good to get in those ears. <laughs> anyway, so I've got the blue here. I'm going to start with the blue. Um, so I've just put like a little bit of a squidge, a little bit of a, um, just a paddle, small paddle, just a little bit of blue. You can see how much blue I've got in there. And I'm just going to get my odorless solvent um, and just squirt in just a little bit, not too much. Um, so still probably, you could use half a, a teaspoon like we spoke about before. Um, that will be fine. Uh, otherwise, just a little squirt if you're squirting out of a bottle. Now remember, the blue uh, is really quite prominent really dominant actually so as soon as you put blue onto the kit most of the time it just leeches onto the kit so we don't want it to be too dark um, as you can see up there by looking at the top it's still nice and translucent and that's what we were looking for just a translucent look okay so I'm hoping that everyone can see everything really well I was going to be originally doing this with my um, main camera, but because I'm doing such close by work, I thought it's much better if I'm working with my 
phone. Okay, so we can see where we're up to now. Um, now with my blue, I'm just going to get a small brush. I'm going to start with just this one here. Um, I didn't bring all of my brushes upstairs, so I'm sort of working with what I have got. Um, you'll have something a little bit more um, better quality, but for the choice of this video, I can use this and it'll be fine. So I should show you what I'm doing with that as well. Focus in. So I've just wiped, um, stirred that around with my brush and now I'm just wiping off excess paint. And I'm going to now get into the fine, the not the fine, but the um, I'm going to sort of do really all inside the mouth. So let's just go for it. I'm sorry. Hopefully you can see it. I'm sort of crouching my head, looking underneath uh, my camera. As you can see, I'm squishing in the spot there. I'm not going to do all the whole inside of the mouth on this occasion. For this one, I'm going to get under the tongue and some more of the feature spots of the mouth. And then I'm going to do it all over with the blue, just inside the mouth, not on the lips. So looking at that myself... You guys probably can't see it as well as I can. I'm feeling that that blue isn't quite going to cut it for me. So I'm going to add a little bit more blue. And darken it up a little bit. Just got a little bit, just that little amount there. The best part about working with any paints is um, when you start out, you don't have to go excessive on the colour. Uh, you can add to it. It's better to add to the colour than to have to take away, really. So my paint, as I've told you a few times, is sort of drying out, so that's why it's taking longer for me to mix in. Plus, I'm using this little brush, which wouldn't be helping. So that's better. You can see that the merging of the new blue is all darker here. So I'll just mix it all around and I can guarantee that it's going to be darker this time. So don't be afraid, guys. You know, if you're thinking, oh, my God, blue, I'm using all this blue, I'm just going to wreck it. If you're doing it the right way, um, you won't wreck it. And um, you're probably saying, well, what if I'm doing it the wrong way? Well, just take it slow. The best thing is to take it slow. And even if you've got a test limb or something close by, that can always help as well. Now let's give this under tongue another go. Just going to get the blue out of the way because I cannot see what I'm doing. Make sure you don't have any blue on your fingers as well. So I'm really squishing it in there and going to get under the tongue. Now you can see that now. See that? That's great. I just want to see it. Oh, look at that. See? See? Everyone makes mistakes. Even I do. Get it off as quick as you can if you do something like that. And it'll be fine. I'm not in the best position, like I said. I'm behind this camera that you're seeing. And I'm sort of trying to just sort of bend underneath it. Now, as you can see where I'm getting in the tongue now, I'm trying to get either side um, of that center bit under the tongue. Sorry, I don't know what it's called. I will look it, look it up so you know what I'm talking about. But I'm leaving that part blank. Don't forget I'm going to blend this in a minute. So if you see that excess color there and you're thinking, Annette, come on, what are you doing? 
it's going to be blended. I'm also going to, for this time, I'm going to go in the upper part of the gum, the front of the gum there, leaving that center spot still clear. I'll do that with the lower gum as well. Look how blue that is. Ah, oh, everyone's thinking, oh my god, Annette, crazy woman. Okay. So I'm just now going to get my blue pouncer. Now I've got a big bigger one for this, so I might actually have to get a smaller one, but I'll see how my bigger one goes first. And I'm just literally going to pounce. This will blend it in. This is going to have to be bent a lot. You can even get your fingers inside for this and push it out. So you can see how that's blended more now. So just keep going um, at the moment until it's all blended out and then let it dry and um, I would be suggesting to bake it again before we go with the next layer. Looking good. If we look from a distance, you can see how um, the inner mouth is obviously starting to darken up, which gives it more of a 3D look instead of a one dimensional look. So let's see how we go after the baking. Okay, so um, I've got my son up here being cameraman at the moment. There's a plane going over, of course. Um, before I heat set that, I wanted to really show you how I get deep down and dirty with this guy. So for instance, when I'm doing the, when I did the top gum, I really bent in its cheeks like that, okay? Get a little bit of the blue and then go on that line on the inside like I said missing that center part there that might be a bit too dark will the light you're covering the light okay so just in those parts there if you go out let's say I just go up a little bit like that obviously you can pounce that out with a sponge but as I was saying before my um, sharp tip pointer here really gets deep into any excess parts and then I get my brush and I just pounce to blend it okay so that's with the top um, okay with the tongue I literally get my hands inside and poke the little guy's tongue out and that's how I am doing the back of its tongue so just the back two sides like that uh, making sure to sort of get on the edge and then the same with the line in there just going along the line okay then with my blend blending brush again I just pounce on it until I blend that out okay so you can already see that that has made a big difference um I also want you to go deep down in the back of this guy's throat so getting some more blue and I'm just going to paint right down the back of its throat now, of course, not all open mouth kits will have a really wide open mouth. Um, it might be just, just uh, partly open. But this is just if you have that wide open mouth. Now I'm going to get deep down in there again with my blending brush. Pouncing. Okay, so... I don't know how well you guys can see in there at the moment, um, but I'm going to blend it a little bit better. But we can see the feature is just up in the top of the gum, down in the lower gum, and under the under the tongue there. Again, as you can see, with that lower gum, if I was to get some blue on, I just have to wipe along it with my little cos cosmetic tip here, and it will get out off any excess onto that line of the gum there. So that's all I'm going to do at the moment. I'm going to heat set it and then um, I'm going to come in with 
um, some more colour. Thank you. Okay. So this little guy is looking really, really promising. I'm really, really happy with how it's going. You can see the bluing under the tongue there and in the top of the gum. So now I'm going to actually, I was going to go on, sorry, I was going to go on with another layer of blue, um, but I'm not quite ready to do that yet. So I'm going to do um, some more red. So you've seen I've got the red already ready from before. I did not get it, remove it. Um, depends obviously when you're doing this, you know, you might not be doing it all in the one day. Um, so you can either find a container where you can preserve your paint or just make up small batches for use. So what I'm going to do with the red this time is I'm going to go inside all of the mouth. I'm probably not going to do the lips yet, but, you know, I change my mind as I go. <laughs> so, I mean, that can be a little bit annoying for you guys because you're trying to learn how I'm doing it. But I do... I do change as I go a lot, but this will work. So <laughs> you know what I mean. So I'm going to paint all inside the mouth there. Top roof of the mouth, back of the mouth, all over the top of the tongue. And I'm going to do all the gums, in, including the line of gum that I did blue before. Under the tongue, so I'm going to pop that out. Will was recording before, so it was really much easier. So all of, just basically the whole inside of the mouth, everything. And then I'm going to, with our little trusty cosmetic tip, I'm just going to get all the excess of the lips that I didn't want to hit in this point remember your hands still need to be clean so if you're doing things in between you need to go and wash your hands before you continue with this so getting a nice look in there for you guys um, I think it's looking quite good of course I'm going to blend that now so I've got my little blending brush. Where are you? Oh, it fell on the ground, didn't it? Okay. So the same small blending brush I was using for the red before. And I'm literally just going to pounce everywhere I can. Um, open it up as much as you can so you're not um, scraping the sides with the edge of your brush. You just want to be using the brush in there and pouncing. You can see right at the back of the mouth there is some excess paint. So I need to make sure that is pounced. Oh, look, I've just pushed the whole mouth inside out. That's what we like. <laughs> just get on there nicely, blend it all in. <laughs> it doesn't exactly look good, um, but it does work really, really well. Because the blending is ever so important. If it's not blended, then it will just look like someone's taken a red biro in there or a red felt tip or something and they've just gone to town. Okay, so just make sure you blend that really well. I'm really liking how it's working out. Really, really liking it. Um, so I'm also going to, because I've been, as you know, I've been heat setting like literally every layer of this just because I don't want to add another colour and then it to um, blend or leach into each other. So I'm going to, while I'm here, I'm going to do a little bit of the lips um, just with the same red I've been using. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do some of the um, outline for this one. I'm not going to go all the way into that centre part there. I'm 
I'm just as I was before I'm just looking for another little brush but of course like I said I left all my other all my brushes downstairs so I'll try with this thinner brush because what I'm just trying to do is just get a lip line I'm not trying to do any um, massive work here or anything. I'm just going to pounce that top off because I didn't like the line it left. Obviously, the benefit of heat setting, you can really work with your paint. Now, if you're doing this, if you're watching this and you really want to do the same thing with air dry, by all means, you can. Um, of course, you know, it's it's very similar. So instead of working with a little of solvent, you'll be working with water. And um, the same rules basically apply. It's just sometimes depending on the weather where you are, you might have to work a little bit quicker than I'm working. So a lot of people find lips very daunting um, to do, but, you know, it's, it doesn't have to be that way. Um, if you can, you know, it's always the best thing to do is to get some test subjects. Um, that is like the ultimate to have some, just something to test on. Um, you can just get like, go down to your local like um, Lifeline or, um, secondhand store and just even get an old doll and um, you know work from there just play with it there's plenty of dolls with nice big open mouths now as you can see she looks like um or he looks a little bit full on there at the moment but what are we gonna do say it say it i can't hear you but i'm hoping you're saying it after watching me so much a lot of you have watched me for years we're going to blend it. So make sure when you're blending it with your brush um, that you're pouncing on. Pounce, pounce, pounce. Don't go flicking it. Sorry, I just flicked the camera. Don't go flicking it because um, that will work the paint away from where it wants to be. You just want to pounce and that will keep it in the area that you want. I'm not trying to give clown lips here. Unless I was Christy, who makes the beautiful clowns, then she might want <laughs> to get the clown lips. It's Chrissy, sorry. Okay, so you can see that. I'm just going to make sure that's blended. Um, I'm happy with what's inside the mouth. Of course, um, when you're looking for yourself, um, if you feel that you want to um, do another layer, by all means, do another layer before you bake. Um, making sure when I'm blending um, that I'm sort of blending sort of inwards is best. Um, we don't if you if you're doing it like this and you and you blend and you push it down, you might risk the the paint going down into hair and looking like a baby that's got like use the term but pash rash or something so we don't want to do that we want to keep it nice and clear around the outsides and um we don't want any excess paint working down there or anything okay so go ahead and see how you go with that so we're going pretty good i'm pretty happy with everything i need you guys to remember that there is no other paint going on this kit so i would have been in the process of other paint as i go i would have started off the kit with um, um some creasing and working on some of the features of its face then i would have done the modeling um within the creasing i would have done i would have started on the lips um it, i would have just worked this into the whole system of things so if you were starting off with a bit of red creasing you would have done the creasing on the lips and mouth at that time if you'd done some blue mottling you might have done some of the blue at that time um 
or even just using making it like a layer in itself um, as you can see where I have um, blended around the edge it's a slight pinker tone um, this is really noticeable due to there being no other paint so I think um, when you had if you had sort of been painting the baby along the way it would have been a lot less noticeable because it's only very very minor but it just would have blended into the rest of the mouth okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a little bit more blue into the mouth so I'm just going to get the blue move my red out of the way mix it up again and literally exactly what I did with the red before I'm going to coat the whole inside with blue now some people might be saying oh well when you coat the whole inside of the blue it's going to sort of counteract the blue you did before no it won't it'll make the blue I did before be be more standout-ish if you know what I mean so let's just go ahead and do this I'm just going to do exactly the same as I did before all of the inner parts the back of the mouth all over the tongue, the gum line, under the tongue, the bottom gum line, so you can see that by doing that it's it's definitely I mean I haven't blended that yet, but it's definitely making that inner part of the mouth appear a lot darker than the outer part and that's what we're trying to perform we're trying to have the inner mouth be dark and um, not obviously not black not dark dark red we just want it to be a shade darker to what the lips are going to be so I'll just do a little bit more and then we'll blend I just want to make sure I get all the spots and I'm giving that blue just a few minutes to sort of leach in to the vinyl and make itself well known. Don't forget, bend out the kit to make it a little bit easier to get into those spots. And again, once again, if you go out of the lines like I have here with the blue, you can see a bit of blue there, just get the cosmetic wedge and lift it off. Okay. Looking good. So I'm just going to pounce that inside with this humongous brush here that I normally absolutely love like I said before it would have probably been better to use something a little bit smaller but I'm not upset about it mouth out baby there we go whoops I haven't got my cameraman with me at the moment so I'm just gonna do this the best I can so you can see that just lifts a little bit of it away and blends it in okay so blend all of that once it's all blended um, I'll be back and we'll add some red to the lips okay so before I go on to bake this one just make sure after every layer that you make sure that the paint has dried um, before you go putting it in the oven and also make sure that before each layer extra layer that the kit is completely cool so I'm just going to get my red that I was using before it's funny people think oh my god you know like red lips I don't want my baby to have red red lips but when you're placing this on as you can already see it's just like a light pink it you know once it's blended it doesn't come out as red as you would think so what I'm doing for this one I'm just going to go on the outer edges here I might use my smaller brush just going the upper lip make sure you get to the gum paint all the way to the gum I'm going to get both sides leaving this center of the lip clear I'm not going to do that I'm going to do a little bit into the middle 
but basically going to leave that clear and then we're going to do the bottom lip now don't forget when you're using this kind of paint it'll go a long way um, you won't have to re-dip that much so just following the line that you can see with your own eyes with the shading of your light just follow the line of the lip the one you can just see you can just see the shadowing of now of course if you want bigger lips go for it you can make bigger lips you can just keep like if i wanted to make that i could make that like fill in that gap there if i wanted i could um make the outline of the lip go a little bit further away as i could the top too i could bring that top bit up into more of a m shape okay you're thinking oh my god that's terrible don't be scared okay so we just need to blend it i'm going to leave it sit there for a minute and then i'm going to pounce all over with my blending brush if you don't have a blending brush um, just use your cosmetic wedge i recommend to tear the top off that cosmetic wedge to leave that bit of a textured feel and just pounce on it up and down don't spread it just keep it nicely pounced and um and yeah go with that i'll do it with my little cosmetic wedge here so you can actually see i'm just going to be really gentle because we want to just settle the paint in without i'm getting my brush too now settle it in without going overboard just making sure any excess reds off my brush there Okay, so you can see what I mean by blending. It's made it just a soft pink. Now, like I said before, again, about the um, outer edge, you know, you can just literally, if it's gone over a bit, oh, look, I keep going into that center part. Just any excess paint that has come out of that area, you can just blend back in. You can see that it's come off there just a little bit. And also, don't be afraid. You'll be painting your whole kit. So any of this excess paint that's going out there won't be on your kit because it will blend into the rest. Okay, so I'm going to just let all that dry and then I'm going to bake it. So from a distance, I want to show you what you can expect. You can see that the inner mouth is darker, which gives that 3D look. Okay, guys, so we're going pretty good here. I'm really happy. Um, you can see, hopefully it gives a nice close-up. Let's zoom in focus as much as you can you can see that the tongue is darker in there that the gum is darker and that's sort of what we want so now what I'm going to do is I've got my two colors there my red and my blue now I've left them sit out for a couple of hours because I went out so I'm just gonna give oh I just broke my special squishy thing that's all right I'm just gonna Give a little bit of a dab of a solvent in there to lighten that up a bit. I don't want any on my table. And how is this one going? Oh, that one's still fine. So what I'm going to do now is I need to mix the two. So I've got an empty bowl here. It's just got a little bit of odorless solvent in, so that will be fine. Um, I've just got like a little pipette here. 
I'm um, just gonna suck some up. Yeah, this is good for mixing around too. You can use any kind of pipe out that you can get from your local chemist, even a syringe. So I'm just going to put a couple of drops of that in. Don't forget that the blue is more powerful and potent than the red. Okay, so let's see. What I'm trying to get is um, just a darker tone of red, more of like a maroney sort of look. And as you can see, that is doing just that for me. The only thing is, is that I find is a little bit too, um, too translucent, as you can see. So I'm going to just get a little bit more of each. it around okay that should be a stronger color good stuff so I'll move my red and my blue out of the way and bring my little guy up here and I just want to paint the whole I'm going to do his mouth and his lips with this one Don't forget, like I said before, when I'm covering over, going over the colour that's always there, already there, sorry, I should say, what it's going to do is just build up. So whatever is below and is already dark, that is fine. It'll still be darker. This will just make it a little bit darker, even more so. So as you can see, it's fairly light. You can choose the level of darkness that you actually want it to be. If you really think, oh, come on, I'm this is taking too long, I'd like it to get a little bit more colour in, then just add a little bit more blue and red and red into your mixture and um, it will brighten it up some more. Now for this one, I'm going to paint a little bit on there. It'll still give it that lighter look, but because it hasn't been painted before, it won't be as bold okay so I'm gonna let that dry and um, then well before I let it dry I'm going to blend it pretty important still to blend um, obviously I've just got my brush that I've been using all day and I'll just literally pound all over, pounce all over it to blend it and then I will bake it again now at this stage I'm feeling like my mouth is pretty good um, it really depends on it's a personal preference now whether you want to add some more color to it um, to make it a little bit more solid you can simply add some more blue and then some more red and keep going like that um, at the end of all this, we can probably add some little spots onto the end of the tongue, but I'll just stick with what we're doing here at the moment. So after this dries, like I said, I'm blending it now. After it dries, I will bake it and then we'll add some more texture to it. Okay, guys, what are you thinking? I'll try to zoom in a little bit better there. As you can see, the tongue and the gum are darker. Um, uh, it's... It's more of a maroon color from looking at it um, from my angle, but there probably is a tiny amount of bluing in there, which isn't unnatural in any way. Um, I've just done a little bit of creasing on the eyes and that to give you guys a little bit of a better, you know, perspective on what it should look like. Um, but I'm pretty happy with how he is going. Now let me just get this going here. Um, I've just got the red paint that I was using on the lips before. Try, I'm not, you know which one I was using on the lips before. I'm just getting a little bit more on my brush and I'm just going to go over those main parts of the lip again. Just in this area here. And over this side. The more layers I do, the um, the the darker 
it's getting. Now, if you don't want it like a too dark or red or whatever, you can just use your general Genesis red. Um, this obviously is the red that I mixed with the blue. Sorry that it's sort of shaking. It's just because I'm knocking the table. So I'm hoping I'm not making anyone seasick. Remember any excess spots, wipe straight off. Uh, I'll do a little bit up the top up there. And I'll sort of blend. I'm trying to hold my hand so it's not going to knock anything. I'll try to blend that in a little bit. Well, I will blend it in. Gee, it's very difficult trying not to knock the table. But you guys can see what I'm doing. So at this stage, I'm going to um, not add any more lip color um, I'm going to blend this lip color in and heat set it again um, but after that it's up to you whether you want to make the lips darker whether you want to make them brighter whether you want to get something like the strawberry or peaches and cream lips and add into it um, now I was going to add some little spots on the tongue but generally in baby terms, if the baby's got spots on the tongue, they may have like a little bit of a, a thrush problem or something. And I thought, oh, I don't want my baby to have thrush. <laughs> so um, I'm not going to do that. But if you wanted to do that, uh, my suggestion would be to um, get get the, the red that we've just been using and use some 3D texture medium. So you'd get a little bowl of texture medium and you'd put about a pea sized shape in there and then mix some of that to color it. And then with a toothpick, you would just do some minor, minor, tiny dots on the end of the tongue. And obviously to do that, you might have to pop it out like that. Um, look here, I'm gonna do it for you guys anyway because just in case someone wants to do it, I'd hate to not be a part of that, helping you with showing you what to do. So as you can see, I've just got about a pea size amount there. Just pop it on there. I'm just going to get, like literally dip my brush in there. And then we're just going to tint that with a bit of our lip color. Now this, this shouldn't show out too bad anyway because, you know, if you notice like if a, a baby was to have thrush on, in the mouth or something, the, the dots might be more white or creamy toned and these are going to be the same tone as the tongue. Okay, um, so let's do this tongue. So as I said, for this I'm going to have to make this little baby poke out its tongue again. A little bit more difficult when you're getting further in if it's if it's painted correctly it'll be easier so just bend it out just so we can get onto the top of the tongue I've got like what I've got here is as you can probably see uh, it's a flossing toothpick I didn't want to run downstairs and get an actual toothpick um, so this is sort of like a tooth actual toothpick for flossing and that but I'm just going to use the end because it's nice sharp and pointy and it's going to do the same effect so as I said again pop out that tongue just get some little bits on the end and literally just pop them on not too much and this is just going to give a small effect of raised taste buds do it around the edge of the tongue too um, don't want to go overboard but still we want to make it effective sorry if I'm shaking I'm just so much pressure holding this baby's mouth open like that So let me see if I can get a nice close shot for you again. Now, you can see those little spots there. 
Now, because I'm using 3D texture medium, let me try to poke his tongue out again. You can see that there. Because I'm using the 3D texture medium, that is going to actually, um, when I heat set it, it's going to heat set in that texture. So it's going to be light little bumps there. Um, so it'll look really good. It'll look quite effective. Like I said, I think that is sort of where I'm up to with the mouth. I think I'm going to finish. If you want to add more color to your lips, now's the time to do it. Um, and there's no like there's no way you should oh that's a little bit too dark <laughs> there's no way where you should what am I talking about there's no point in which you actually have to stop adding the color just a little bit too dark there I didn't mix it properly so mix it properly and I can add some more I still want to blend this so that's after I mixed it better I still want to blend this bit here before I bake it okay but you get what I mean don't you okay so I'm going to now blend those lips in and then I'm going to put it in the oven again and then we're on to the next part okay so I'm going really really well and I'm really really happy with how it turned out um, you can let me try to zoom in again to those tiny bumps you can see the tiny bumps there and they sort of just go along the top of the mouth oh the, sorry the tongue there so I'm really quite happy with that so now we've got to talk about sealing now I'm going to seal it of, of course I've got some satin uh, varnish here heat set satin varnish now when we go to sealing the mouth as you can imagine it's going to be really quite difficult we need to get like a very even thin layer and that's really hard inside a mouth now as you've seen as I've done before I've bent the mouth out of shape and everything but it's it's not as recommended uh, when you've gotten to the end of the paint. I mean, we don't want, I mean, nothing should crack. Nothing should crack or come off. It should be all completely sealed, but it's always a concern. So anyway, I'm just going to go ahead. We're going to start with this. This is a satin varnish, and I'm just going to literally get, like, like I always say, just about a pea-sized amount. Just that size amount, I'm just going to put it on the side of my little dish there. Now, that's probably even too much, literally. I'm going to take that and get half of it away because it's just not going to be what I'm going to use. So then I'm going to get a cosmetic wedge. Now, the same as I did with the other one, I'm going to rip the top off. Okay. And what I need to do is just basically I'm just going to pounce onto that satin varnish I'm just going to pounce to cover uh, my cosmetic wedge as much as I can so you won't be able to see it uh, if you can touch it you could feel it's just a little soft touch there and then basically I am going to pounce over the entire mouth now as you can recall with this baby it's not finished I'm only finishing the mouth it's literally just a test baby for you guys um, so you would have had to have finished all the rest of the paint before you go ahead with this but literally it's just pouncing on now you should see as you can see right there just the ever so slight sheen can you see how it's sort of glowing and this is really flat that's how much we're using it's hardly anything at all so I'm gonna bend my mouth out I'm gonna get a little bit just more just in case I mean as you can see see how flat this has come um, from me making sure I get this well covered so there's hardly any left but there's obviously still a lot it'll still go a long way so I'm going to first See if I can get in here as much as I can. Just get in the 
little grooves. I'm just going to push the mouth out there, just get on top of the tongue and I really want to try to get under the tongue. Now this is, I'm using, as I said, the heat set satin varnish. Um, you can use heat set matte varnish. Um, you can use moist glaze medium, um, whatever you generally tend to use when you're sealing. I'm doing this one. This time I'm just trying to get that mouth out again. Just get in there as much as I can. Don't worry, obviously, if you don't get right at the back of the mouth. I mean, how often have you got you know someone going in there poking 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 um, but we want to seal it the best we can so I have sealed it with the satin varnish and I'm really happy with that so now with the so as I was saying um, I've sealed that um, I'm going to now put uh, once it's nice and dry um, it'll really dry <laughs> i'm going to put it in the oven uh, for the usual eight to ten minutes then i'm going to take it out of the oven let the head cool then i'm going to put it back in the oven again for the eight to ten minutes and let it cool sometimes people like to do it three times um, i'm just doing it two times this time for the fact of the video and then i'll come back and do some glossing okay guys so i think i'm happy with the paint job um as you can imagine it's always better looking at these things in real time in real life i think um but as you can see from a distance as such um the inner mouth looks darker there's a three-dimensional look there there's different shading um so i'm all completely happy with it i'm just going to now mind my messed up studio you guys know that i'm still working on getting my studio up to date so i've just got some air gloss air dry gloss varnish here and what i'm going to do is i've just got like a flat flat ended brush like a lip brush and i'm just literally going to paint the gloss on hopefully you guys can see everything fine So just painting the gloss on, just getting all of the area that has been painted, basically. I'm going to move that lip out again so I can get in there a little bit better. Just getting every little groove, getting all over the top of the lip, all in through the gum, all in underneath in the mouth. And now just the bottom lip. My husband's going to barge in in a minute and go, where's Nettle? Because he doesn't get what I'm doing. Okay, so we can see we're all glossed up there now. So what I'm going to do now is just let that dry. Um, I'll probably put another coat um, over the tongue. And then I think for you guys, I am going to do some spit bubbles down there. May as well go all out and have this baby mouth done exactly the way that you guys would like to see it done. Okay, so I think this little guy looks lovely. I just love the way every t everything turned out. Um, for me, that's what I expect out of a mouth. Um, just especially a two-tone color, um, the mouth being different to the inside of the mouth. Obviously, um, this is not gospel. Um, people don't have to do it exactly this way. You might have a better way and that's fine. That's just, this is just the way I Find works well for me so anyway I'm going to like I said work on the spit bubbles we're sort of going to go all out here and make sure we do everything um, so I've just got um, like a spit bubble solution here and I've got this tool so squishy squishy um, there's many different tools you can get I think I have about three different ones for sale on Aussie Reborn Supplies so this little, uh, it's only $3, it's not very expensive. I'm just going to give it a little shake just to mix up the solution there. 
and basically I'm going to want the bubbles underneath the tongue area so I'm just going to squish some here and some here so I like to then leave it like sort of set for a minute like it's like a I don't exactly know what product this is um, this is bought from a reborn supplier um, a wholesaler I should say um, that why I say it's like a glue type product is because it sort of starts to set and then you start to work with it so anyway let me do this now what I'm doing is I'm squishing this in depending on the tool will depend how you do it and then I put it in the area and unsquish it and it sucks up some of the product but what we're wanting to do is actually blow bubbles underneath the product So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is turn off the camera for a minute because it's not ready to work with and I'll start as soon as it starts to allow me to bubble it. Okay, so I found this tool may have, as you can see, it's got some gunk in it, but it's got to have enough room in that tube to let out plenty of air and it wasn't doing that. It's an old tool of mine. So I've got two other tools here. Um, this one, obviously, it's going to poke air through and there's a tiny hole here. And this little one, which I'm just going to give it a go here. So what I should do is pop in the air and see how you can see that was popping. It's not quite ready yet. It should You should be able to do that really slow without any popping. So it's not ready yet. I'm going to give it a few more minutes. Okay, now I've managed to get a bubble to work there, as you can see. Um, so this will pop as soon as I pretty much work on it, pretty much. <laughs> it takes, a, it only takes about five minutes for the bubble, the solution to be ready. Um, I've got it all down in the one area and I literally just blow into it. Oh, it's starting to work really well, as you can see. So don't try to suck the solution up into it. Just try to blow the air into it. Now some will pop as, they, as you go along. And even if you get one done, they might still pop. So don't get too frustrated with it. You've just got to do it ever so slowly. Now this solution will dry it will dry like that okay so I'm gonna leave that like that and um, I will notice over the next well even half an hour I'm gonna take this off the tripod for a minute as I said over the next half an hour some of my very special bubbles there will pop it just seems like in it's natural that a couple will pop uh, but let's see how many stay there. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not going to touch it or play with it anymore. I'm going to leave it and I'm going to leave it sit for about an hour before I show you again. So let's hope, crossing fingers, that none pop. But like I said, after I put the solution in, just this one here, um, I let it set for about five minutes. This one is an old tool of mine and probably does have some gunk, a little bit of gunk. You can see some gunk in the tube there. Um, there's still air coming out, which is what we need, but there wasn't enough air. So I went downstairs and I got two of my other tools. Um, this one... Um, it's just literally you squeeze out, squeeze out the air um, and it let, let enough air out to make the bubbles. Um, this one is just like a, like a syringe, obviously. You pull it back and you would slowly, slowly, slowly be pushing that end in, which would be letting out air through the pipe out 
pipette at the front so that's a good solution too I do have them so um, what I have to do now have 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 to do is clean this make sure it's um fully clean so I'll get a little bowl with a solution of my odorless solvent in and I will squish it in and out a few times so in the time we've been talking I don't think any have popped yet okay so I will show you back in about an hour Okay, so I've let it dry for around an hour now and I've sort of put him in a little position like he's all ready to go home even though in reality this little boy has a lot more work to be done. But you can see his little uh, spit bubbles there. You can see a little bit right in the middle. You can see it's a little bit whitish still. Um, but basically the spit bubbles have dried up nicely and have left that bubbly sort of spit looking um now that that one could have been the, the bubbles could have been done sort of in the back of his throat too if I wanted but generally that's where they'd sort of be um yeah so I'm really really happy with him um feeling like he is definitely what we wanted to see so thank you all thank you so much for watching I hope it's been really helpful um, for you all watching this mouth and tongue tutorial um, it's been really really fun for me and I feel really sad that he isn't actually completed like I just want to pick him up and hold him and do special things with him now um, but he's literally only got his mouth worked on so that's not possible so anyway I'm going to continue working over him over the next couple of months but unfortunately he's going to be put on the back burner for a bit until I get time to work on him um, just if you liked this tutorial and you want to see more um, and you want to receive notifications make sure you go to my actual channel page and click on the little bell there and once you click on the bell you will normally receive notifications when I have a new video come up um, if you want to join into my live streams I do them every week which is Friday morning Australian 8.30 Australian Eastern Standard Time um, might be a little bit hard for you to work out but most of you if you're overseas it's like Thursday night sometime um, you might be able to just see when they pop up and sort of work out the timing for yourself like that um, subscribe to my channel of course we're coming up to 10,000 subscribers and there'll be some giveaways of babies then maybe he will even be one of those giveaways so anyway thanks for watching and I hope this was really helpful and I'll see you next time bye happy reborning <laughs>